Rose. We are so excited today to have Dr. Lara Green from the National High Magnetic Field Laboratory. Welcome, Dr. Green. Thank you, Roxanne. It's, I'm very happy to be here. Great. So could you just introduce um, yourself to us? Okay, well, my name is Laura Green, and um, I'm the chief scientist at the Mag Lab, as you said, and I'm a craft professor of physics at Florida State. Um, I'm also involved in a lot of international projects for science diplomacy and human rights and, and involved in things like the International Union of Pure and Applied Physicists and a bunch of other things. So besides science, I do a lot of uh, other work. <laughs> Can you tell us how you describe your job to the general public? There's so many facets, it's difficult. So usually I consider who I'm talking to. Um, so one aspect of my job is uh, really being in charge of the science drivers of the mag lab renewal, which is taking up about you know 60 hours a week right now. <laughs> and um, it's really fun because the magnet lab is so broad in what it does. And uh, you know, from biological work to geology, chemistry, physics, um, and also the work that you do in the education and outreach was really one of the main attractions for me coming to the magnet lab. But also my own research is on quantum materials and I like to think, you know, I give a general talk called the dark energy of quantum materials because there's so many fundamental unsolved problems and we're constantly trying new techniques to understand these materials. And, um, uh, you know, most of what I'm talking to you on this computer, most of these materials are pretty new and they really change everything, our economy and the way we communicate. So um, also a lot of what I do is worry about bringing physics to developing countries and working within countries uh, where there might be two different academies where they don't necessarily get along because one's political and one's more scientific. And so I do a lot of that and, um, um, and also work on human rights for scientists, so. That's great. That's a, actually a great summary, Lara, for all that you do. Um, <laughs> when did you first become interested Muscle in Muscle. physics? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, when did you first become interested in physics? I have a standard answer for that. I was hardwired that way. <laughs> so uh, I have a birthday tomorrow, and I don't think I'm going to tell you how. I could tell you how old I am, but anybody that's my age, uh, all my girlfriends, uh, we were never encouraged to do science. And I remember being so small that I had to reach up to the bathroom sink, wondering why water was soft as opposed to the sink being hard. So I just always had this and, you know, looking at the stars and things like that, I just, I was totally addicted to it. It was like a calling, so. So did you ever have a setback in your career? And if so, how did you overcome it? Oh, never, <laughs> absolutely not. No, never had a setback. <laughs> Oh man, um, I th the one there's so many. You know, from the point of girls shouldn't be doing this. Uh, when my parents found out that between fifth and sixth grade, I was in a um, a science class, a summer science class, and I was the only girl. Though they got really mad at me, uh, so I was discouraged a lot. I think one of my biggest setbacks that I really came through on was uh, when my thesis advisor just sat down with me and said, "You are not going to get a job in physics. I will make sure that you don't. You're just not good enough." And uh, so I can go into reasons why that happened, but I remember how I overcame that. And uh, I ended up just deciding, I'm just gonna do the best interviews I can. And I got a job at Bell Labs. <laughs> so, um, so I think I've had many of these things where I thought, I can't do this, I'm gonna give up, it's gonna kill me, you know. Um, what I do is I think back to a place where I did overcome. I remind myself and I play that tape again and I remind myself how I looked in the mirror and I kind of proverbially sharpened my teeth and walked in to the interview with my head held high, so. What advice do you have for middle school and high school girls who are interested in STEM? Well, try to think back on what you really love about it. So I, my analogy to that is that um, there's a reason for people to get married, I decided because after a certain amount of years, when someone puts the fork in the wrong spot and you blow up at them, um, you remember there was a rite of passage there, okay? And, and you, remember, you try to remember that. And so for me, I try to remember some of the great joys I had in figuring something out, or if, even if it's not figuring it out, just learning something new, 
learning that what is this about curved space? You know, wow. Um, and the other thing is, since women are minorities in STEM, it's so important to have your girlfriends. I do this all the time. And um, so when you feel any minority, it's true, not just women or any minority in any field, when you feel like you're the only one that feels that way, it's very important to say, am I crazy? Uh, yeah, yeah, you may be crazy, but listen. And then the, the analogy I have is that, you know, you give someone over the email or something or whatever, a proverbial hug, and then you push them back out there and say, you can do this. And, uh, and I find that that's very helpful. And it's also helpful to talk about with your friends as much physics as you can or science, but also other things. And uh, because it's, you know, I don't think of myself as only a physicist. It's so wrapped up in what I am. It's not a career. It's just who I am. So it all gets wrapped up together. That's beautiful. So the next question is, how has COVID-19 affected your job? <laughs> well, I guess it's so funny because it's had dramatic effects and zero effects at the same time. Um, so uh, I actually don't do much lab work anymore. I've got people in my lab that are turning the knobs and it's actually counterproductive. I mean, I miss it, you know, you get successful and all of a sudden you're not allowed in your lab anymore, but, um, but it, it's just inefficient. But last year I put on, I travel a lot. And last year I put on 700,000 flown air miles. That's not bonus miles, that's air miles. So I did most of my work on airplanes. I bought the International Go Go, which reminds me, I should turn that off now. Um, <laughs> and, um, and I did my work on airplanes and hotel rooms and in the last round meetings. And uh, now I'm just doing it at home. Uh, so it's, so in some sense, you know, I kind of miss the acceleration of the airplane, but in some sense it's, it's, you know, it hasn't really changed. I'm still writing reports. I still have tons of meetings. And the other thing, I had so many video meetings, you know, when I was president of the American Physical Society, I probably had six or eight a week. And so I'm quite comfortable on these video meetings. I don't feel, you know, I feel like I'm right there. So, <laughs> so it's interesting. I will say that what I found, and most of my friends that are academics or, or researchers uh, or in any kind of field, that we all feel like we're working 16 hour days or longer with about three hours of output. And so um, that's the other thing is that all the OCD and ADHD just really kicks in and, you know, things are coming in and you're working on something and then you get less efficient. And uh, so that, that's the other thing is that they're long days. <laughs> well, thank you, Lara. That are, those are all of my questions. Is there anything you want to say or any closing comments that you want to make? Oh, I can't think of anything except that um, try, try to stay positive. Um, uh, you're not always going to be positive in this global pandemic. You're going to have a panic attack here and there. Um, what the other thing I used to like work randomly, like sleep randomly, et cetera. I find that I, you know, I'm at my desk at 8.30 in the morning, sometimes earlier, I try not to. And I try to end the day by six or seven and then do some other things, get some exercise or watch TV or something, or just something different. And so I find structure really helps me. Uh, so, and just, you know, and the other thing is that if anybody wants to be in touch with me, you know how to find me. <laughs> so I'd be happy to talk with anybody. All right, well, thank you so much, Lara. It was so great to talk to you today. Nice talking with you too, and thank you very much for doing all this.